My name is Michael Ilian. I'm the grandson of Gleb Ilian and the son of Alexander Ilian. And today I will speak about the life of my grandfather. I was lucky enough uh, to have met my grandfather and known him for approximately just a year, a year before he passed away in, uh, in San Francisco in 1968. We had moved from Colorado in the end of 67, so I, I have uh, these vivid memories of my grandfather, very calm, distinguished, tall man, uh, very soft-spoken, and I remember all the portraits that were in in the house at Russian River where he resided at the time. And then the next thing I remember is a funeral and my grandfather uh, being uh, buried in the uh, old cathedral where I later learned that he had painted many of the icons. Going back to the beginning of the story, I would like to present the story as how I understand it, how I see it. The following are excerpts from the California Arts Research Project from a document written in 1937. Volume 10 includes an extensive detail of uh, the struggles of the Ilian family as they escaped the Russian Revolution, settled in Japan, and made their way to San Francisco. In San Francisco, California, the brothers of Peter and Gleb and wife of Peter Nadine comprise artist members of the Ilian family. The obstacles that the Ilians encountered in their rise to recognition would have broken the spirit of less hardy people, but they overcame even the inferno of war and revolution and emerged with their courage unbroken. Gleb's father was Alexander Petrovich Ilyin, and he came with his uh, wife to the outskirts of Kazan and settled on an estate in 1885. In uh, two years, he and his wife uh, had their firstborn son. His name was Peter. He was born in 1887. And my grandfather, Gleb, was born two years later in 1889. And they grew up. Uh, very close together, so two years apart made made them best of friends. So uh, Peter was always a little bit ahead of Gleb. So at uh, three years old, uh, Peter was uh, given uh, um, a pad of paper and some crayons, and immediately he began to sketch. And so there was a little competition. So the little brother Gleb wanted to imitate his. Uh, older brother. Nobody at that point really realized that he had this amazing uh, potential in the future. He convinced his father to allow him to study in the middle arts school and take law uh, at the same time. But after a year, uh, Alexander recognized that his son Gleb was not going to be uh, a good lawyer or a good judge, so he allowed him to continue in art, which turned out to be wonderful. I found in reading the biography that uh, Gleb's father was very supportive. The moment he realized and saw the talent that Gleb had uh, as <clears throat> is different in other instances, especially in old Russia where sons often had to follow in the footsteps of the father and pursue the same career of the father. So I imagine if Gleb was forced to be a lawyer or a judge, uh, things may have turned out quite differently, but he was allowed to pursue his passion. Gleb, in 1911, he uh, finished his uh, middle school of arts and was accepted to the Imperial Arts Academy in St. Petersburg. So he went on. That was uh, to be a six-year program, and he did very well. I learned something new that as doctors here have internships in hospital, uh, so artists had internships and were assigned to other teachers and one of my grandfather's favorite uh, artists and mentors was Zirepin and this was still back in Kazan but as he uh, pursued his arts career he was very successful. He was uh, uh, supposed to graduate in 1916 and he had already been commissioned by the wife of the Grand Duke Konstantin Romanov 
uh, to uh, paint his portrait and there were several other uh, works that he had finished at that time in St. Petersburg. And uh, unfortunately this all came to an abrupt end. I don't believe he was actually, he had finished his course of study but he didn't actually, uh, wasn't able to go through with his graduation ceremonies. The uh, uh, assassination of the uh, Grand Duke Ferdinand which triggered all the events of the First World War. Peter, uh, meanwhile, uh, being the oldest son, finished the academy, the Imperial Military Academy in Kazan and uh, left for the Austrian front as an officer. And all this is happening and, and it, it's hard for me to imagine that both of them continued their love and their pursuit of their passion, which was art and painting. Everything was uh, stopped uh, as the uh, Russian army was starting to approach the town where uh, their parents lived. So uh, Peter wasn't going to make it back in time, so he asked Gleb through letter to uh, come and take his father and mother out of Kazan and move them to where the white armies were gathering t for safety. So Gleb made it back to Kazan and uh, managed to take his, his mother and father to the next uh, town, I believe it was Perm, uh, Russia, where they waited and unfortunately the Red Army was able to take over Kazan. Then they were marching towards Perm. So again, they had to leave. But I believe that Gleb's father was so sick at that point that he just could not move on. And uh, consequently, he ended up staying and he, he soon passed away. He did have heart disease. Gleb joined uh, the military. And at that point, Peter joins them as a colonel in the white army and they're moving they're trying to hold their ground but the the russian uh, red army is forcing them further and further things are happening so quickly i believe it's already 1917 gleb meets uh natalia melnikov who was the daughter of also a russian uh, white russian officer and uh, after a short engagement period they're married and very soon Peter, who also somewhere along the way, uh, I believe it was in Kazan, but it was a very short ceremony. He, meet, uh, he had already been engaged to another artist who had been studying actually in the same academy that Gleb was. Her, her name was Nadia or Nadine Komov. And so they're married and they uh, also cross the Ural Mountains and uh, somehow through God's providence they, they meet in the town of Chita, which is uh, a fairly large city in Siberia. And this is where they reunite and they're so grateful that they're alive. Unfortunately, Natalia Melnikov's father was uh, uh, killed by the uh, Red Army. But here is where Again, they plan their next move. They realize that their aristocracy, they are loyal to the Tsar and the White Army. So if they stay in Russia, the likelihood is that they won't survive. And at this point, the Japanese uh, have some kind of uh, bastion or fortress in, in this city of uh, Chita, where they was the last Russian city that they were in before they were uh, took exile into Japan and they got to know the Japanese. The Japanese were fluent in Russian and Gleb at that time before Peter had gotten back was doing many portraits of, of some of the Japanese officers. They became very friendly and as a consequence of this relationship when, when the pressure came for them to leave again the Japanese extended their arms and offered um, both uh, Peter and his wife Nadia and Gleb and his wife Natalia and, their, and his mother of Dakia to uh, take refuge in Japan. So the next stage of their life for the next few years will take place in Tokyo, but uh, they're able to leave Russia without any further consequences.
So this is, I would call the third stage. So Gleb and Peter survived uh, the Russian Revolution. The consequences obviously are and will be going on for the next decade at least and further, but they've managed to leave and it's such a short amount of time that they get to Tokyo, they suddenly get established again, and they have two or three art exhibitions. Within the first two years, there's an art exhibition of over 60 paintings by both Peter and Gleb and Nadia. So essentially there's three Ilians in Tokyo. And within another year, year and a half, uh, they present another 90 uh, portraits uh, that um, are in this same um, uh, Japanese imperial exhibition and every single portrait again is sold. I think this is a crucial point in, in the lives of these three artists, Peter, Gleb and Natalia. It's at this uh, crucial point that their creativity wasn't stifled, that it was somehow resurrected at this point reading the biography I understood that that if they weren't strong they could have given up and just went into survival mode but somehow they continued to uh, keep their dreams alive and when they came to Japan suddenly this uh, artistic uh, fountain that had been inside both Peter Gleb and Nadia came bursting forth in full force. Their success was more than they could have anticipated. And this indirectly allowed them uh, to have the ability and the funds to eventually move to the United States. They were granted visas by the U.S. government. Peter left for San Francisco uh, somewhere in 1920. Uh, earlier, Gleb did not follow. Uh, it's not sure why they didn't all go together. Maybe it was because Peter wanted to test the ground and see if it was a viable place to be, and it was. As soon as Peter got there, he got work right away. So he writes his brother and, and says, please come. So in about a year and a half, Gleb, Gleb follows with his wife, Natalia, and uh, their mother uh, Yevdakia and so they arrive in San Francisco and immediately Gleb also begins to uh, do various work and one of his most famous works was uh, the portrait at, of Mrs. Hoover which was requ requisitioned by the, the uh, President Herbert Hoover. I first came into contact with my grandfather's creativity when we moved from what had been uh, my grandfather's ranch. So when they arrived to California several years, uh, he was commissioned then to Colorado to uh, paint uh, several portraits there. And what started off with uh, a few commissions ended up into the next 15 years where my grandfather had finally settled. They bought a a large cattle ranch and that was part of their business. As Gleb continued to paint portraits and travel, I, I know he's traveled to other states, including Texas, where he painted many portraits and then he would come back. Meanwhile, they had also built a house in San Francisco and I remember a lot of wood carvings and sculptures. My grandfather also, he not only painted portraits, but he was a sculptor and he loved wood carving and I, I myself uh, work with wood and, and have a deep appreciation for that. I remember uh, specifically when I came to San Francisco in the final year when my grandfather passed away in 1968. I was eight years old, we had just moved from Colorado and I remember this happy, tall, uh, fairly s slender man who was uh, very vivacious, very happy, and I remember even my uh, stories from my grandmother and my father who would speak about his ability to maintain uh, 
a social presence. He loved to entertain. He liked to uh, spend time with his family. And it didn't uh, take away from his work. And he ne never made it a point of isolating or secluding himself in his, in his work. He always managed to uh, have this wonderful balance. He was fairly soft-spoken. Uh, I remember seeing a picture of him dressed quite well and carving a Thanksgiving turkey with a smile on his face. One of my grandfather's last works, and uh, in my opinion, one of his most important ones, was uh, the, cath the old cathedral, the original uh, cath Russian Orthodox Cathedral in San Francisco, which was on Fillmore Street, which later uh, was condemned by San Francisco uh, for being uh, below standards because it was so old. And my father, being an engineer, uh, helped uh, renovate the church. I was a little boy uh, helping him. I think it took three or four years. And today this cathedral uh, uh, has been declared by the city of San Francisco a historical landmark. And my grandfather was responsible for much of, of the woodwork inside and of course all of the icons and iconography and the scene of the resurrection uh, behind the altar were uh, completed by my grandfather. So I, I feel very proud because this church uh, was very dear to me as I was growing up. I have only really recently uh, fully grasped as much as I can of the concept of what it meant to to keep a sort of dignity despite all the trials and tribulations that uh, the Ilian family had gone through. From looking at all the pictures and, and had I not read the biography, I would say that this was a very dignified, uh, although humble family that perhaps had not experienced anything necessarily tragic in their lives. And so somehow it took a long time for me to connect the, the photographs and the reality of what they had lived through and to think how did they remain uh, so calm? How did they remain so peaceful? And, and the uh, images uh, that their faces portrayed and their eyes showed in the photos showed to me the strength of character that they must have had the internal strength that they embodied throughout their whole journey, uh, not knowing themselves where they would end up, what would happen, would they uh, eventually find work or be successful, that somehow they maintained that level of dignity which they brought. And we as, as their uh, grandchildren can inherit, I feel a sense of pride now having gone over this, having uh, studied it and learned more about my ancestors has given me a real sense of pride and I and I'm grateful I want to thank my grandparents for their uh, pursuing uh, this life with a vigor with a desire to survive and I hope that their legacy will continue uh, and not stop with my generation but that my children and their children will be able to one day appreciate what, what their great-great-grandparents have gone through.